from the depth instant tutorial. Today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of rail assisted guns. To make a rail assisted gun you first need to make a normal APS gun which fires shells with gunpowder. So um, we already done that in the previous tutorials, please check them out. I will proceed to make a normal APS gun here. To make rail assisted guns you first need a perfectly working normal gun. And the reason why you want to make it rail assisted is that you can make it fire the shells a lot faster. So basically rail assisted guns are great for kinetic shells and also useful for chemical shells but not as much. With kinetic shells speed times mass does the damage. So more speed means more damage. And this is where the rail assisting part comes in handy. So we're designing a hollow point shell, which means solid warhead body. Make the stats up for the particular gun. Find a nice mix between thumb damage and speed. It should be at least 1000 meters per second using only gunpowder. So this will be our shell. Now we can start looking at the gun. We can see that the auto loader limit is 5 RPM and that the cooling limit is 1.8 RPM. We'll need a lot more cooling. Alright, now we have this 500mm gun set up with enough cooling and a nice barrel as well with a little bore evacuator. So this gun works at a 5.1 RPM, very nice. Of course we need uh, recoil absorbers but we can add that later. Of course we are already dealing quite some damage so let's just test this thing a little bit. You can see we are tearing holes with our hollow point shell. Right, so how do we make this better? Well, of course, now comes the rail assisting part. So if we just go into this little shell here, we can draw this slider, rail draw. So basically, if we would have the max rail draw, which is uh, 50,000, we could get this uh, almost to double the speed. This would be quite devastating indeed. If you want your shell even faster, you can go in here and add a base bleeder instead. Now this will make it less accurate, but it will increase speed quite some bit. So you can play around with both values. If it misses too often, remove the base bleeder. So before even starting to add rail assisted things, we should of course cover the energy generation. So to make sure that we actually have enough battery power, we're just going to add an extra block for the time of being and also a couple of RTGs just to make sure that we actually produce all the power that we need to power our rail assisted parts. So what we'll do is we'll go into railgun parts and add railgun magnet attachments. And of course this particular mantlet makes it so we can only have these on two of the sides. Now we are going to add magnets. So we can see here rail gun barrel magnet. Each of these have a energy capacity of 5000. If we go into the firing piece on the railgun part we can see maximum energy usable per shot. You can drag around with this slider to limit it if you want. Otherwise just keep it maxed out and you can see that the maximum energy usable for loaded shell is 50000. So then we should have exactly 50,000 energy or a little bit more in order to fire one shot with full rail charge. And that means we'll need uh, 10 of these in total. Should be 5,000 each times 10 should be 50,000. Now we need to add railgun chargers and we should have uh, railgun chargers to amount to a level so that we have the same RPM as the gun. So the rate of fire is 5.1 RPM, which is 11.62 seconds between the shots. So if we go into the railgun, we can see that the charging time is now 25 seconds. This value should be exactly the value specified, which is uh, 11.67. 11.36 is the closest we can get. So now we should be able to fire with a full rail charge and it should be able to recharge the rail as quickly as the outloaders fire. If you would double these magnets you could make this a burst cannon 
and uh, then you will need to up your cooling a lot uh, because the cooling will then decide the RPM if you want to burst gun. But for a normal gun like this you'll just need to have the capacity to fire one shot at this specified interval. Also make sure to keep uh, an eye on your energy level in the lower right corner to see your battery there so that it doesn't empty and that it does recharge between the time. In any case it's time to test fire. And now you can see we are dealing a lot more damage than we did before because of the rail assisting. And uh, it should indeed fire as often as the outloader can fire because we have synced up everything. Very nice, it works perfectly. Alright, so we still have a lot of problem with recoil, so of course we need to add recoil absorbers in order to make it accurate. And to make it accurate you can also go into the railgun part here and use some of the energy for an energy buff. So if you do drag this up the shell speed will be uh, decreased but the accuracy will be increased so you can play around with that a little bit. Maybe have it on a some percent. And then you'll just add recoil absorbers until the inaccuracy from recoil gets uh, removed from the listing down here in the information. And that might need uh, you to uh, rearrange your entire gun a little bit uh, if you have a specified form factor you want. But when you have done that, you're uh, very good to go. And here we have the finished gun. Alright then, then it's up to you to uh, armor it up a little bit if you want to make a turret or if you want to make a fixed cannon, all up to you. Just remember to add a local weapon controller all in one thing if uh, you intend to save it as a template. And usually I like to have my ammo piece onto the build but this is a modeler little cannon so I will not this time. And it deals a lot of damage. So test around with the uh, different ammo types as well, just to make sure you know and understand the damage types. This is hollow point, which spreads out the damage. Bonus tip, if you change the shell composition, it will actually affect the rail draw stats. So to make your cannon fire again, because if it doesn't have enough rail it will fire, you can go and select maximum energy per shot and just write in the maximum level you have which is 50,000 for this case, or you can just add more magnets, that works as well. Well that's all for the bonus tip, and here we have a bonus showcase of armor piercing round, which actually shoots through this entire block, if you wanted to know different damage patterns, but more about that in another video. Future Jiminism out! Hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you did please leave a like and do stay tuned for future instant tutorial. This is Jim Edison, signing out.